Welcome back to On Chain Investigations, and I'm back here with another video. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Today we're going to be going through Block Threat Intelligence Week 21 and looking over how price oracle manipulation is still being in a top a top attack vector. How Polygon ZK EVM got a save from a really really good blockchain security researcher and <clears throat> let's get started guys if you like what you're seeing make sure you hit that like and subscribe button turn on the notification bell and make sure you comment let me know what else you want to see i'm trying to grow this channel so maybe i can do more content more often let's get started guys as here we are going through block threat intelligence week 21 let's get started the main thing i'm focused on here is the polygon zk evm uh bug that was found a critical vulnerability that was found and it's somehow found a way to stop bridging between layer one and layer two. We'll go more into that in depth, but let's start reading the Peter Katrzynski's blog post. This week, more than 8.5 million was stolen from various DeFi projects on the Binance Smart Chain, Arbitrum, and Polygon chains. Price Oracle and reward manipulation continue being top attack vectors. A major scam have finally exited with 31.6 million, while FBI is warning job applicants to be wary of accidentally joining a fishing farm. Detailed indicators for the above incidents are in the previous section. Some truly fascinating vulnerabilities were patched thanks to responsible disclosures in several major projects such as CyberSwap, Seller, Polygon, ZK, EVM, and others. It's great news on one hand, however, it teaches us that even the most audited code is bug never bug-free. And that's something I emphasize a lot. doesn't matter how audited your code is. Just look at level finance. I'm just joking. But it doesn't matter how audited your code is. It's always a bug in there. Developers sometimes are just not aware of what vulnerabilities their code is going to allow sometime in the future maybe weeks months years past they find some hacker finds a vulnerability in there that nobody ever even thought of this week's edition also features the latest and greatest in blockchain research so there's a lot of news going on here um crypto hacks down 70 percent that's very good in q1 2023 tornado cash dow passes attacker's proposal to hand back control founder of crypto exchange btce which is a russian crypto exchange um Eyes prisoner swap with Wall Street journalist. Wow. Confidential report flags Bitfinex security lapses and Treasury targets malicious cyber and illicit IT worker activities. So scams. Crypto phishing service Inferno Drainer. Never heard of them. Defrauds thousands of victims. What? They're a phishing service and they defrauded thousands of victims. So crypto phishing service Drainer defrauds thousands of victims. Cryptocurrency phishing scam service called Inferno Drainer has reportedly stolen over 3. Point, I mean 5.9 million worth of crypto from almost 5,000 victims. According to the report by a Web3 anti-scam firm, Scam Sniffer, the phishing service also created at least almost 700 fake websites. What, since March 27? That was literally like two months and some change, like 70 days ago. Most of the phishing sites came online after May 14th, while analysts reported a spike in site building activity. The malicious website is created by Inferno Drainer targets 229 popular brands, including Pepe, Bob, MetaMask, OpenSea, Layer Zero Labs. Yeah, that's a bad one. But let's get back into the meat and potatoes of today's video. I want to look into this one, FBI warning of false job advertisements. I know a lot of people that have been kind of going through similar things. Let's take a look at this PSA from the FBI. FBI warns of false job advertisements linked to labor trafficking and scam compounds. The FBI warns US citizens and individuals who travel or live abroad and the risk or the of the risk of fake job advertisements linked to labor trafficking in Southeast Asia based scam compounds where victims are held against their will, intimidated and forced to commit international cryptocurrency investment fraud schemes. Criminal actors target victims primarily in Asia and employment fraud schemes, that's crazy. Okay, now let's go into the Polygon ZK EVM vulnerability that was patched recently. It's right here. So this was a security researcher that found the block, the Polygon hack. Let's go read through his Twitter thread. He recently discovered a vulnerability in the Polygon ZK EVM and earned his first layer two bug. The vulnerability as causes assets being bridged from layer one to layer two Polygon ZK EVM cannot be claimed properly in layer two, thus blocking layer one, layer two asset migration. As we know, when a new user wants to use a rollup, they first need to bridge their assets, their layer one assets to layer two. In Polygon ZK EVM, the technical workflow is implemented as follows. And this must be the workflow diagram of bridging assets from layer one to layer two. Pretty complex. And let's keep reading. 
the user calls smart con layer one smart contract bridge asset function to lock the assets on layer one the bridge smart contract appends the corresponding metadata to the layer one exit tree and updates the layer one exit tree root and the global exit tree root in the smart contract afterward the off-chain infrastructure will sync the global exit route from layer one to layer two once the route has been synced any user can call layer two smart contracts claim asset with the merkle proof hash and leaf index deposit count to demonstrate the correct exit leaf inclusion and mint an equivalent value representative asset to the recipient i noticed the claim transaction designed to be free in the layer two node which means that the gas price is allowed to be zero perhaps this is because new layer two users do not have ETH to pay the gas fee, and this is the function he's talking about. It looks like it's written in Golang. I received that. I, re I realized that malicious actors can send invalid free claim transactions without any layer one deposits. So that's bad. But this is not possible in reality. To prevent denial of service attack before the claim transaction is added to the TX pool, the claim transaction gets pre executed to ensure that it will succeed. If duplicate claim transactions are sent to the transaction pool at the same time, they will both be pre-executed successfully under the same state to ensure that only free claim is accepted for each layer one deposit. The claim transaction added to the TX pool will be marked as used with the deposit count. So far so good, but I believe that vulnerabilities may be hidden in the complexity and diversity introduced in this particular treatment of claim transactions. Finally, I found an oddity in the code logic of handling the claim transaction pre-execution results. Let's take a look at that. And this is the if statement right here that was later removed. But um, here is the else block where it's handling a bunch of cases, and he's going to go more into that later. So let's take a closer look at the snippet of code. If claim transaction is free, meaning the gas price equal to zero and is reverted, then return a free claim reverted error, which is right here, this free claim reverted error, contains three cases. It means that the else statement contains three cases, free and non-revert, non-free and non-revert, and then non-free and revert. So he's gonna go into why this is bad vulnerability. The first two cases have correct handling, but the third case incorrectly marks the revert claim transaction deposit count and adds it to the transaction pool regardless. This breaks the expected design. The claim transaction added to the TX pool must ensure successful execution. Therefore, we can bypass is reverted. And where is is reverted? Um, so yeah, he's by right there. He's bypassing is reverted pre-executed check of claim transaction by setting the gas fee to a non-zero example one this enables a malicious attacker malicious attackers the denial of services sequencer and approver and in the zero knowledge proofs of sequencer and approver are very important for building out a zero knowledge application or zero knowledge protocol it's very cryptographically heavy so by sending a large number of low cost tra claim transactions thus increasing computational overhead Furthermore, the transaction is not deleted from the pool immediately after the execution. The status is updated from pending to selected. This must be the DB logic and continues to exist in the PostgreSQL DB. However, only one trusted sequencer is able to fetch transactions from the TX pool and execute them. So yeah, this is the Golang function method for storing process transactions and delete them from pool. Let's keep reading. Thus, another exploit is maliciously marking any deposit count by sending a failed TX. This causes the claim transaction that correctly uses the deposit counts to be rejected because the deposit count is already used. This makes layer two network unusable for new users. The Polygon ZK EVM team fixes vulnerability by removing the particular gas logic for claim transactions. Although no funds are at risk due to node upgradability, this is an interesting issue arising from a mix of contract and blockchain node logic. Definitely is an interesting one. And he observed that Immunify added a new impact to their medium bugs. So a bug in respect in the respective layer zero, one or two network code that results in unintended smart contract behavior with no concrete funds at direct risk. This is an error in the implementation 
of the smart contract processing logic that will lead to different unexpected behavior. However, no funds are at risk. But this is still something in the node software that is a bug. Like, let's go here and look at the actual Polygon ZK EVM node. This is written in Golang. It's the node. It's their version of the EVM, but with zero knowledge proofs involved. And there's a lot of different code bases. This is the sequencer that handles um, a lot of the sequencing of transactions and database, database management. And this is still very much under scope in an active bug bounty hunting. So if you feel like hacking some Golang code, Golang node infrastructure, take a dive into Polygon ZK EVM node. And they have a whole glossary of the architecture, how the code base is based and everything. So let's go back to the tweet thread. And it looks like it's over here. This guy, ICZC, he's a very, very well known blockchain security researcher and works for Scrolls ZKP. And he created Chainflag. Awesome. So that's it for Polygon ZK EVM. This is a very critical vulnerability. It looks like in the layer one, layer two migration of assets. And it's not just smart contracts that we hack in bug bounty hunting. It's node infrastructure, node software, validator nodes, whatever the case may be. So let's go into Tether Gold smart contract hack. Public transfer vulnerability of Tether Gold smart contract by BlockSec. Let's look at this one, baby. So our analysis tool found a bug in the Tether Gold contract on April 5th, which allows an attacker to transfer anyone's XAUT. And AU is the, um, stands for gold on the chemical periodic table. AU is the symbol for gold on the periodic table. Token to a predefined address. The team received that report and they said they located the issue internally. Today we found that issue has been fixed and we want to share the details here. Also illustrate how we use the Falcon fork to develop the POC. So the vulnerability is here. Function transfer from has two required checks and then it's doing an if statement to see if it is a is trusted recipient. So in the transfer from function of the contract, anyone can invoke this function to transfer other users' tokens to a trusted recipient defined by the token owner. Though this vulnerability cannot be directly exploited to transfer the tokens to the attacker's account, the attacker can still transfer the pool's token to manipulate the token price in the pool say weth to xaut pool to profit to fix this vulnerability is straightforward it's shown as follows so it looks like all they did was remove this if block because the two required statements are still the same and returns the same transfer from sender recipient amount and they just removed this uh block right there that if block how to exploit this and this is a very good um proof of concept looks like so to write this but in debug the proof of concept we can use the falcon fork for this purpose First, we create a fork before the vulnerability is patched. I use the block height while creating the fork through the fork API. So step one, first get enough ether. Step two, transfer the ownership of the Tether Gold contract. The owner of the Tether Gold contract's multi-sig wallet to transfer the ownership to the explorer. We need to submit a multi-sig transaction and confirm the transaction. This is a very good example of a proof of concept that you're gonna have to write for your bug bounty hunting experience for whatever you're doing code for reading or immunify. You're gonna have to write well-written well-documented proof of concepts. And this is a very wonderful example, by the way. So step three, add a privileged account to the Telegram contract. We added the account as a privileged account and then we invoke the transfer fund function to the transfer to transfer the Tether Gold token from a victim to the privileged account. And this is it right here, the call stack. We'll see what the POC is. Uh, it looks like it's a Python script and this is it running right here. It's pwned. Yeah, so it's showing how the balance is changed after i'll give that a star so um let's go back here what's something else we want to look at so the kyber swap hack saving a hundred million at risk from kyber swap so yeah this one i briefly looked over it's very long he talks about um cm clmms so let's go earlier i found a critical bug in sushi swaps on release con concentrated liquidity pools however rather than their use their own code, they decided to go to Vanilla Fork of Uniswap V3. This fact alone would have disappointed me, but the hack itself was so sweet, so epic, the whole experience left me crestfallen. I wonder what crestfallen means. I'll post details of this exploit soon. However, there was a silver line to the whole experience. I developed a deep knowledge of concentrated liquidity protocols. And that's the good thing about bug bounty hunting. You're gonna develop a deep knowledge, whatever, if even if it's your first project, of whatever protocol or um, project that protocol is doing so you're going to develop very very niche knowledge in that blockchain space on like he did 
concentrated liquidity pools because you have to know the in and outs of the whole code base, how everything is working, how methods are working, how state is being transferred, everything. Question was, could I leverage it somewhere else? And that's another thing. Once you find a bug, your first one, which is the hardest one, you're going to be able to leverage that bug you found and look for another place. I cast my eyes into a few concentrated liquidity protocols, projects on Immunify, but I hadn't been, if I hadn't been for the fact that I didn't receive a bounty for Sushi Swap, I may never search more widely. One day, I suddenly remember I had a conversation with a judge from Code for Arena about a project he worked on, KyberSwap. I didn't know how I wasn't more aware of this. In other words, they are the OG DeFi blue chip. Yeah, I've known them for a while. Uh, so in 2022, they made a comeback in the top DEX rankings with a concentrated liquidity market maker, different than an AMM. And when I first visited their app, they had a staggering 125 million total value locked. And then this is their smart contract repo, KS less static, now legacy code. So what is a CLMM? To get the most out of this post, I'm going to have to teach you a little bit about how concentrated liquidity market makers work. In an ordinary AMM, the liquidity added to a pool can be utilized by traders regardless of the price. In a CLMM, liquidity pools only provide liquidity by narrow price spans. The token they provide as liquidity will only be used if the current price falls within the narrow price range. This has a couple of advantages. Higher liquidity utilization leading to greater capital efficiency. This translates to a smaller price impact, and liquidity pools can determine the extent of their impermanent loss they are willing to bear. More can be learned about this here. So he goes into very deep details, the micro, the tokenomics of it, the math of it, and a lot of deep, deep knowledge into the methods, the storage, and everything. So yeah, this is a very deep one, and... Let's go to the bottom to see where the root cause. When I submitted my proof of concept, I didn't actually know the root cause of the bug. I'd found that I'd be doing a small swap. Put the system in the state required for the double ad exploit. So the Kyber Network team, which were wonderful to work with, with basically what his article was saying. So the Kyber swap team determined that the root cause of the snippet was this snippet of code right here, if statement. Yeah, this is a very complex one. He wrote a foundry, he wrote a foundry script using a fork of the state of the system on Ethereum mainnet at block height right here. The powerful concept uses AVI flash loans to drain most of the tokens from the pool. For now, the repo is private, will be released shortly. Please come back to this post in the near future. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on this. And this is his payment schedule, so that's a very, very healthy payment. And what happened next? In my opinion, KyberSwap handled the situation exceptionally well. And that's very good to see because I've heard stories about people on uh, firms on Immunify that don't really handle you finding bugs in their protocol well. But KyberSwap seemed like a lovely one to work with. This is a very complex one and very deep dive into CLMMs. And if you want to look into that later, you can just check out Block Threat Intelligence. That's where I go to for all my blockchain security crypto news. Now, let's take a look at the fun side of things. Uh, Web3 is going great. So let's see what's happening here. Unseth compromise after private key leak to Git. No, private key leak to GitHub. Oh, my God. That's such a rookie mistake. After a developer leaked private keys to GitHub, someone used them to drain 375k. What did you think was... I mean, obviously he didn't do it on purpose, man, but that's such a rookie mistake. Oh, the project emergency paused withdrawals for Unseth Ether to prevent further damage. The leak allowed the attacker to transfer ownership of projects, smart contracts to themselves. Of course, he had your whole... He pwned your whole protocol. Anybody could have. He's not even a hacker, really. He... I mean, he's a hacker. He hacked the protocol, but he just looked through your Git repo and just found through old Git commit your private keys. <sighs> Though they later returned ownership. So, un wait, the leak key allowed the attacker to transfer ownership of the projects from conscious themselves, though they later returned ownership. On Seth posted a message to the attacker demanding he return 90%. Oh, so he could have kept 10%. What <laughs> was 10% of 375K? What? Thirty-seven thousand dollars and five hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. They threatened. So this is the threat from Unset. Let me read it in a threatening voice. We want to be clear. This is not a bluff. We know who you and some of the people connected to you are, and we will absolutely move forward with law enforcement if you have not returned our money by the deadline above. We do not want to do this to you, or have to rope your friends in. 
and would prefer everything to be settled and everyone just move forward. But if we don't get the funds back by the above mentioned time, we will be left with no choice in order to protect our protocol. This is the tweet. Sounds exactly like someone Bluffy would say. Here's the tweet. <laughs> I'm bluffing. Yeah, they're sick. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny one. So a trust reserve employee arrested. Looks like some Chinese cryptocurrency firm. Uh, Binance delist privacy coins in various European countries. Binance doing layoffs. Like most projects. And it was funny. This is May 31st. I saw somebody on LinkedIn the other day saying layoffs are over. Everybody calm down. But it's June, baby. It's still happening. NFL Labor Union. And I wouldn't imagine them to be on this website. Is almost at 42 million thanks to a crypto collapse. A report from the Atlantic indicates that the NFL play, NFL Players Association, a labor union for NFL players, has been unable to collect nearly 42 million. It is owed in licensing and sponsorship revenue. The Athletic cited sources suggesting that the issue was directly related to the collapse of the crypto industry and to its partners renegotiating licensing deals due to the downturn. The amount is owed by affiliate One Team Partners. In April, Sportico reported that sports NFT platform Dapper Labs had discussed restructuring its deal with the NFL and the NFLPA due to an extremely rocky year. And this has been an extremely rocky year. So I feel for Dapper Labs. Everybody's going through it. So to, so to at DraftKings, which had signed a deal with the NFLPA for its Rainmakers player NFT trading cards. Charity NFT project sports to be. That's a shame. Why would you do such a thing? MoonPay. What? MoonPay is. They were a highly regarded crypto company. Executives pocketed 150 mil raised from Series A. So they just defrauded investors. Oh, would that be considered defrauding investors if you fund my company? And I, yeah, that's the definition of it. You fund a company and then they just pocket the seed, the Series A. According to a report from Information. MoonPay executives, including CEO Ivan Soto, right, pocketed 150 mil from their 555 million Series A funding round, completed November 21. Uh, uh, uh. You can't do that. MoonPay is a crypto payments platform known for its NFT concierge service, popular among celebrities for its various allegations of undisclosed promotions leveled against it related to some of those celebrity deals. According to the information, MoonPay never disclosed that 150 mil of its Series A funding was used to purchase shares from insiders, including Soto, right? And never went to the company. Several weeks after funding around Soto, right? Purchased $38 million Miami mansion. Mm -mm -mm. That's how you get blackballed from the industry. Take VC money and then go blow it on yourself. No, it's supposed to go to the company. Supposed to be growing, you're supposed to be building. Parent White Hack exploits Eldorado Exchange, claiming developers built in a back door. Okay, yeah, I like this guy. So the developers built a black door, a back door in the protocol to steal users' funds, and this white hat found that back door. Uh, the new Arbitron based Eldorado Exchange is exploited for around half a mil, more than half a mil. An interesting twist the attacker claimed to be a white hat who was exploiting the developers that implemented a back door. Wait. And an interesting twist, the attacker claimed to be a white hat who was exploiting, who was exposing that the developers had implemented a backdoor to allow them to force liquid, liquidate any product position they desired. This activity involved intentionally signing incorrect prices to manipulate users. That's a shame. The attacker promised to return all funds minus 10% white hat fee if developers admit to manipulating the prices and also offered to disclose other vulnerabilities they claimed to have found in the project. Project founders wrote in response, yes, we have acknowledged making an ill-advised decision to manipulate the price, so they confessed. However, our intention was to blacklist those who had previously exploited the system, fully aware that all transactions are recorded on the blockchain. We did not aim to misappropriate user funds, as this would leave a traceable record. We will promptly remove the problematic bomb contract. Wait. An exploiter began returning funds shortly after. You introduce a problematic bomb contract and then just say sorry you caught us another exploit money laundering investigation jimbo's protocol exploiter was seven there's just too much to even catch up on malfunctioning bot cost poo finance poo finance this must be a joke 
Coin One employees admit to this looks just like Coinbase, just like Coinbase. Admit to facts in case regarding token listing. But there's just so much to go over, guys. There's too much. It's just the summer is just starting. It's gonna be a crazy summer of blockchain hacks. Stay with me. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm gonna keep doing this all summer, trying to build this chain last. So if you guys want to support me, please subscribe. Come back often and check out my videos. Peace out, guys. Have a great weekend. Let me know what you want to see more of as well. Right in the comments down below, and I'll make more of it. Peace out, everybody.